Good morning. I'm glad that you're here with us this morning. I just want to preface by saying the first and the third Sundays of each month that we meet corporately here at Zion, and the second and fourth Sundays of the month, we meet in our revival community groups slash home groups. It's our home church. And that's a time for us to um, be more community oriented and be in relationship with each other and be able to spend um, more time with one another. So if you are not connected with an RC group, you can actually get on zionequip.com and you can see where all of the groups are located and which one you might want to try out and maybe try out a couple until you find a good fit for you. So I really highly encourage you to do that because the, the RC groups are really fun. So um, I have a couple things that have been resonating within me, actually churning for some time, and I just wanted to share a couple of these things with you. So at the beginning of each year, uh, the Lord usually gives me one or two words for the year because I ask him to do that, and so he does. Last year was the word resilient, which really, as you can imagine, for 2020, that was a really good word to have. Not that God gives bad words, but that was a really good word. This year, it was resolute. So I kind of want to share that with you because I feel like it's for the body at large. So resolute means purposeful, determined, resolved, decided, adamant, firm, set, intent, steadfast, deliberate, unfaltering, persevering, unshakable, and I love this, bold, brave, courageous, and unwavering. I was like, well, those are pretty good words. So unwavering really sticks out to me that we really need to be unwavering. And you know, scripture talks about being unwavering. Well, scripture talks about all of those things, but it talks about being unwavering. And James 1, 6, it says, believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blowing and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. And this is in regards to asking the Lord for something and um, believing and receiving for something. And it's talking about how when we doubt that we're like a wave just tossed back and forth um, on the sea. And I'm thinking about in just today's um, culture that there are so many that are tossed just back and forth and back and forth. They're, very, they're not unwavering. They're wavering in every aspect. And this has a lot to do with like the the decisions we make and those type of things. We can't be wavering. We have to be very decided and very firm and very um, steadfast and set and intent. So God wants us to be unwavering. He doesn't want us to be lukewarm. He would rather, the word says he would rather, I think it's in Revelation, it says he would rather that we be hot or cold than lukewarm, that he actually spits the lukewarm out of his mouth. So how does that happen where we become lukewarm? One of the ways is compromise, and I've talked about this before, but it's compromising. So when we're tossed to and fro and we become double-minded, then we start compromising. And then we'll do that on like every level as far as making decisions, or we can see this on every level now in the world with people making decisions and that kind of thing. It's very um, just wavering. So what causes that? A lot of what causes that is doubt, worry, and fear. So when people start, you know, we're bombarded. If anybody's listening to the news, which I highly suggest you don't do, but if anybody's listening to the news or a lot of the news, I'll put it that way. We want to listen so that we're aware and we know how to pray and we know how to intercede, but we don't want to get caught up in the news and what they're saying because it could be a real bummer and it will call, cause fear, doubt, and worry. And we see that all over. So, you know, what is our standard? Our standard of truth is the word of God. We can become unwavering because our standard of truth is the word of God. It's in the Bible. I mean, it is the Bible. And the Bible has all the answers to all the questions that we have. And again, I just know from conversations and just seeing, just posts and different things just in the world that we can see there's a lot of wavering going on because there isn't that standard of truth. People aren't standing on the truth. So we have to know what the Bible says to be able to stand on that truth. So one of the things I think happens is people become, they compromise and they become wavering because they don't want to offend anyone or they don't want to be judgmental. Um, so then they'll compromise. But what we need to do, again, is stand on the truth of the word and not um, compromise. 
I'm seeing right now too, as we all are, I know we don't like to talk about this in church, but I'm going to hit a couple of these things today. So this isn't just like a sweet little devotional. I'm actually going to hit the political uh, spirit and the religious spirit because they go hand in hand. And right now they're so rubbed up, both the political spirit and the religious spirit. The political spirit will say, you're a racist, you're insensitive, you're a homophobic, you're judgmental. And then you have the other side, and like I said, they go hand in hand, so it can go back and forth. But then you have the other side that the religious spirit will say, you don't want to offend anyone. Are you being critical? Are you being judgmental? Is that very loving? And so when you have that, those two things in play, it can get, um, it, it can just, it can be tough. So we have to remember, it's not about our emotions, our opinions, our thoughts, but we let the word dictate and, and that the word is the standard of truth. So we always go back and see what the word says. And then we can stand on that um, being non-wavering. And again, we can make that stance and we always want to make that stance with love. But we always have to look at what is the motivation of the heart and the delivery. How do we deliver things? And one thing you don't want to do is deliver anything over text or Facebook. It just doesn't read well. It won't be received and it doesn't change anything. I'm sure we've all been caught up in that a little bit here and there. So we just want to be, again, we want to be loving. Um, if you're in a conversation with someone and there is, you know, because right now everything's brought up <laughs> in conversations about the different issues and the different policies and that kind of thing. And that's okay to have those conversations as long as you stand on the word and that you're loving and you're real. It, it's always, again, about your heart motivation. What's the heart motivation behind it when we're delivering something? And we can see like from like Facebook posts and stuff like that, it's not working out real well uh, as far as communicating. So again, we want to just go back and make sure that we're, we check our hearts and we're using love. So in Ephesians 6.12, it says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. So what I always say in Sozo, what I always say all the time is we're just setting aside flesh and we're not looking at the flesh. We're just looking at the spirit realm. So we're going to put moms, dads, brothers, sisters, everybody over here, flesh and blood over here. And we're just going to look at spirit realm. So again, right now, more than ever, what we can see is that in the spirit realm, if you're just looking at the spirit realm and you're not looking at, are you this or are you this? You're like, you just look at the spirit realm. What we're seeing is it's evil versus good and it's darkness versus light and it's lies versus truth. So we can set aside Republican, Democrat. It doesn't even independent. It doesn't matter. It's like, what is, because I, I know people will say, I've heard them say it in my own family. Well, I'm, I'm a Democrat because my mom was a Democrat. My grandmother was a Democrat. My grandfather, I'm a Republican because I've always been a Republican. Well, what does that mean? <laughs> so don't we need to just look at the issues and then line it up with the standard of the word the, the, of truth and then make our decisions based on that because we are born again Christians that are filled with the Holy Spirit. So we want to make our decisions according to what the word says. So again, we're just putting everybody here and we're just looking at what the question is or what the issue is. And <clears throat> I guess what you could do in a situation like that, I was thinking about it, is I always like to ask questions. So if there is um, somebody's asking about, well, what about this issue and what about this policy? That way I can look at it and go, well, is it evil versus good? Is it darkness versus light? Is it a, is a lie versus truth? And I think the most important thing that we can do is just ask, is it pleasing to God and does it line up with his word? And then that's our answer. And that way it takes all of the guesswork out of it. And it's not going to be um, thoughts, my opinions, my thoughts. It's going to be, well, what does the word of God say for him about it? And it's, again, then you're not being judgmental or critical as long as you're walking in love. And again, that's the key. So I look at it too, like the word covers everything. It covers everything from anything that we want, that we want to know or to learn, we can look in the word because it covers family, marriage, finances, children, divorce. It covers homosexuality issues, abortion, whatever it is, it's in the word if we'll seek it out.
So one of the things that I have heard over and over is God doesn't care about America. That all <laughs> you Christians, God does not care about America. And I'm like, wow, he cares very much about America because we're a nation of his people and he loves his people. We are his sons and his daughters and he loves America. He loves our nation. He loves every nation. And how do I know that? Again, because we're his sons and daughters and we live in the nations and he loves the nations. I looked up the word nation and it's just a community of people formed on the basis of a common lang language, history and common culture. So anywhere that you look uh, through Genesis, through Revelations, God is always talking about the nations. So that doesn't stand up when somebody says, well, God doesn't, God doesn't care about America. He very much cares about America because we live here and he loves us. Hmm. So another thing is, and I'm just throwing this out here. I don't want, <laughs> I don't want people to get all uptight. He doesn't use the word abortion, but what he does talk about is the life and the value of the unborn. So to me, that speaks um, volumes. He, in Psalms 139, it says, For you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, and I know that full well. My frame is not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. That scripture always really gets to me because he just loves the unborn so much. Now, that I'm not going to get into all of the reasons for why or why not about abortion or anything that like that. I'm just looking at that scripture and then the scripture in Jeremiah. I mean, he talks about his love and the value. Obviously, he's the creator of life. So he talks about the unborn and his heart and his love for the unborn. So we can make um, decisions based on that. Like, what does God say? What does it say in his word about whatever subject it is? So again, as Christians, we need to be unwavering. We need to be steadfast. We need to be bold. We need to be courageous while we walk in truth and love. And then we stand on that truth. And I look at it like if we aren't speaking truth, then who will? Because you're sure not going to get it from any media um, right now. <laughs> Anything in that arena, you're not going to you're not going to hear truth. But what I do want to say is be really encouraged because even though I mean every day, it's just like it's so dark and all of the issues that are coming out each and every day is mind boggling. I've had a lot of discussions with a lot of people. And but what I just keep saying is the dark is getting darker, but the light's getting really, really bright and it's shining. It is shining. There is revival happening all over not just our country, but countries, but other countries. God is moving. God has a plan and he is large and in charge and he knows how to execute that plan. And it's going to be really awesome. He's shining on all things that need to be exposed. He's exposing everything. It's by his hand that a lot of stuff is happening right now. He's exposing things. He's exposing things in each of us. If we'll allow him to do that, He's going to expose those things and then we can go to him and talk those things out. I'm sure you've all had some things that he's been shining light on and it's really good. So again, I just look at it that this is a time of um, the light getting brighter and I'm very, very excited. There's a shakening and awakening happening right now. There's an unveiling that's happening right now and it's like the birthing of a reformation that is happening. And we've been going through what we have seen, and we're still kind of in that process. We're real close to birthing, but we've been in the labor of that. And now we're about to go into that birthing process. So it's about to get really good, and the days ahead are going to be awesome. So I just bless you with those encouraging words, and I just want to pray over you. Uh, so God, I just thank you. I thank you that you're, you are large. <laughs> And you're in charge and you know exactly what's going on. And I thank you, God, that you have all of our hearts in your hand. 
And I thank you that you've given us your word and that you've given us Jesus. And that is the standard of truth. And we can be so non-wavering or unwavering as we stand on that truth. And we can walk in love. So God, I just thank you for blessing your people, blessing your people with your shalom peace, no matter what it looks like, that you have a plan and you're unfolding that plan. Things are being um, unveiled and you know exactly what you're doing. And all we need to do is trust you and stand on your word and walk in love, be unwavering and just look to you for everything because you have the answers to all of the questions. So God, I just thank you for blessing your people with your shalom peace. Again, that shalom peace that destroys all of the chaos because God, there's so much chaos right now, but you destroy all of that chaos with your shalom peace and that you would touch every heart. You would touch every heart and every mind right now with your shalom peace. So bless you guys. Have a great week.